Topping today's news, a mother and daughter found dead in their apartment. Two men charged with the Easter Monday murder on Eleuthera, a new consulate set to open in Canada this weekend. And the opposition shares their thoughts on sailing becoming the new national sport. <music> Saunders, this is your JCN Evening News. It's a pleasure to have you join us. A double homicide here in the capital. A family left to mourn as what is believed to be a mother and daughter found dead in their home. This gruesome discovery was made today in an upstairs apartment complex on Ross Corner between East Street and Market Street. Police press liaison officer Chief Superintendent Chrislyn Skippings giving more details. It was shortly after 10 o'clock this morning. A concerned citizen contacted the police after she smelt a foul odor emanating in the area just behind. Police responded and on arrival to the residence, they had to breach the door to get inside as the door was locked. And upon entering the apartment, discovered two females partially decomposed with what appears to be lacerations to the upper body. At present, we cannot say definitively what occurred here, but we are investigating. His Majesty Coroner was on the scene and upon initial investigations, the two females appeared to be deceased for approximately two days. Chief Superintendent Skippings also revealed that one of the victims appears to be in her mid-teens. Officers could not provide a motive at the time. However, they do have a male suspect in custody assisting with the investigation. At this time, in the early stages of the investigation, as indicated, we just got a call this morning about foul odor. So... I'm certain if residents heard something, if something was going on, they would have alerted the police. But now here it is, police are going to commence an investigation. We're going to be speaking to neighbors in this immediate area to see if they may have heard anything. Definitely we're going to look at technology and see if technology can definitely assist us in our investigations. But as mentioned earlier, we do have a person of interest in custody. And so we're going to be speaking with him. And based on the intelligence that we gather from him, it will determine where our investigation goes and whether or not we will be able to put that person before the courts. As this is a developing story, police are appealing to individuals in that community who may have any information to contact the police anonymously at 328-TIPS. That's 328-8477. Two men, police believed to be responsible for the Easter Monday homicide on Eleuthera, had their time in court this morning. 35-year-old Emile Hepburn and 41-year-old Jeremy Co. Knowles appeared before Magistrate Algernon Allen Jr. The duo were both charged with the April 10th murder of Leroy Bethel. According to police reports, it was shortly after 3 a.m. police were alerted to a traffic accident near an area commonly known as White Town in Hatchet Bay, Eleuthera. When officers arrived on the scene, they found a male inside of the vehicle. On closer examination, the victim was apparently or had apparent gunshot wounds to his upper body and was pronounced lifeless by the local physician. The two men were not required to enter a plea as the matter will be fast-tracked to the Supreme Court for the service of a voluntary bill of indictment. The men were also charged with one count of armed robbery and one count of possession of a firearm with intent to cause harm. The men were also not required to enter a plea to the weapons charges. They were remanded to the Bahamas Department of Corrections until they returned to court on June 30th. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs is set to open a new Bahamas Consulate General Office in Toronto, Canada. An official opening ceremony is scheduled for Saturday, April 15th, under the patronage of Prime Minister Philip Davis and Foreign Affairs and Public Service Minister Fred Mitchell. Bahamians living in Canada are invited to attend the first annual diaspora reception tonight at the Radisson Blue Hotel in Toronto. According to a statement from the Foreign Affairs Ministry, the opening of the Toronto Consulate General Office is an integral component of of the Davis administration's foreign policy commitment to expand the reach and influence of the Bahamas to protect Bahamian citizens and their interests worldwide. The Consulate General will be headed by Consul General Al Delette. The Consulate General's coverage will extend to the Canadian provinces of Ontario, Quebec, 
Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Prince Edward's Island, Newfoundland, and Labrador. That said, Prime Minister Philip Davis will be out of the country for four days. The Prime Minister traveled to Toronto, Canada today to open the new consulate office. That will happen tomorrow, as well as to attend the first annual diaspora reception organized by the government of the Bahamas for Bahamian nationals living in Canada. A statement from the office of the Prime Minister notes that the Prime Minister, his visit is a testament to the strong relationship between the Bahamas and Canada, and it also highlights the government's commitment to fostering closer ties with the Bahamian diaspora. Following a statement from the office of the Prime Minister notes that the Prime Minister's visit is a testament to the strong relationship between the Bahamas and Canada and also highlights the government's commitment to fostering closer ties with the Bahamian diaspora. Following Prime Minister Davis' visit to Canada, he will travel to Trinidad and Tobago to attend a regional symposium under the theme, Violence as a Public Health Issue, the Crime Challenge. The Prime Minister will join regional leaders and experts in discussing innovative approaches to tackling the issue of crime and violence. The symposium is scheduled for April 17th and 18th in Port of Spain. In the Prime Minister's absence, Education Minister Glennis Hannah Martin will act as Prime Minister as Deputy Prime Minister Chester Cooper is also out of country. Prime Minister Davis is expected to return home to the Bahamas on April 19th. And finally, in this segment, with the Department of Inland Revenue conducting their first search and seizure operation on Harbor Island, Eleuthera, resulting in the seizure of a number of goods and assets, Inland Revenue's acting controller, Sean DeStrom, gave an update on those operations during a press conference earlier this week. And what we're noticing is that we have more and more businesses, number one, that have no business licenses. So you have businesses engaged in generating turnovers, and they're not reporting or they're not applying for the business license. So that was one concern that we noticed, especially in the family islands. We're concerned because we have businesses operating, but they really don't have valid business licenses. One, that was one. The second thing was or is that we're noticing is a whole lot of businesses that we know have reached the $100,000 VAT threshold, but they're not registered for VAT. And that's alarming to us. So you have businesses that are operating um, in relatively lucrative industries, and we all know the cycle. It was revealed that Inland Revenue found an additional $3 million in undisclosed revenue earned by one of the businesses on Harbor Island. We did some investigations in Harbor Island. We're not done. But so far, we have, we know that in terms of revenue, it's probably over $3 million for the businesses that we have started to review. And I'm saying it like that because the audits are ongoing. The audits are not done for those businesses as yet. We're still in the midst of gathering data, going through systems, going through revenue reports, receipts, buying statements, definitely. Um, and so, so far, we're probably at the $3 million mark, and I don't know where, we, where we'll end up, because you talked about some businesses in the press, but there were even more businesses that we are looking at. Some of them started to, I guess, come in once we even, after we did the initial investigations that we had, which was actually previously done, not during the time that all of you reported on. So we Acting Controller Strawn reveals that so far they are auditing nine businesses and they are still doing preliminary investigations on mainland Eleuthera, having identified three businesses set to be audited. Like I say, we still have a lot to go. We, we will do more visits, but it's not just Harbor Island or Eleuthera, you know. It's throughout the Commonwealth, it's throughout the Bahamas. There was talk too about the couriers. Right? There's lots going on with the couriers. And again, as I said, it's because we've noticed a trend where we know business is really heightened for the couriers. They're collecting more revenue, but we're not seeing that reflected in what they were remitting. So we did do an exercise where we halted shipments or you know, we stopped the release of goods until some couriers kind of settled their accounts, especially VAT accounts. 
Ms. Strawn professes the purpose of the ongoing operations is not to put people out of business, but to promote business. She says in doing so, they must make sure that revenue owed to the government is being collected. She noted that payment plans have also been made available to business owners. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back after these commercials.